Hey, it's Christy. This is not your normal commercial. This is like a one-time recording. If you're listening to this after November 2021, skip ahead 60 seconds to the episode. But if you're listening to this like really recently after it comes out, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go to pingboard, P-I-N-G-B-O-A-R-D.com slash podcast. That's where you can find my page, sign up for my newsletter, get my funny emails. But there's a banner on there. I need you to take this survey. I really need you to take the survey. I need 400 responses. I'm going to create this awesome report called the state of people ops. And it's going to give you all these great insights, like what other teams struggle with, what software they're using, salary insights across the industry, and lots of other things. It's going to be this super helpful report, but I need enough responses to make the data good. And to me, that's at least 400 people. So go take the survey, please, if you don't mind. I really appreciate you. And just go check out Pingboard. It's a great lightweight HR tool to add to your tech stack. It helps with onboarding, helps with employees feeling like they know who's who across teams, especially if you're distributed. It helps your employees foster work relationships and like friendships, if you will, because it's okay to have friends at work. You should have friends at work. It shows you like who the person is behind the job title. And it's got just like some fun, great features to make everyone feel like their work matters. There's peer recognition, a way to track wins and like a way for managers to have much more meaningful one-on-ones with their people. It's an awesome tool. Okay, here's the episode. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the difference between employee engagement and employee satisfaction because they might sound very similar and people often throw them around. Maybe even your leadership team throws it around synonymously, but this is your chance to explain to them why it's different, but why both of them matter and how you plan to measure them and how this is going to push your business forward. And it's going to position you as a really badass HR or people leader. Here we go. At a high level, employee satisfaction measures how happy someone is with their job. Employee engagement measures how willing someone is to go above and beyond in their job. I was reading on Sherm's website, they said something that makes this really easy to remember. The factors that influence employee satisfaction are directly under your control, like the organization's control. On the other hand, the factors that influence employee engagement are more so under the control or influence of the employee's manager. Employee satisfaction is really boiled down to, does the employee feel like they're satisfied with what's offered at the job? It's like a one-way street. What can the company give to me? And that's human nature. That's okay. Everyone thinks that way. It's from the care packages you send or the swag or the in-office snacks if you're in office, the cool office layout if you're in office. Or if you're in a remote distributed team, the company does things to make sure that we all feel still connected to each other and we have these cool things to look forward to. As opposed to employee engagement, which is more so like the relationships at the company and empowering people and measuring Do people feel like they can change the business and not just work for the business? Employee engagement is a two-way street. What can the organization and I get done together? It's like the salesperson who pulled an all-nighter because they wanted to fix the way something was organized or a busted report in Salesforce. They just go above and beyond to improve things and bring innovation to your company. It's important to call out too here that an employee can be satisfied with a job without being engaged. Employees might really like the benefits and the perks of the job, but they're not going to do anything above and beyond to change a process or be innovative. They just kind of hang out, do their thing, they get their work done, and then they log off. It's also important for you to know that an employee can be engaged but not satisfied. People can feel like they're doing meaningful work and that they really feel fulfilled from the relationships and the projects that they get to work on and the mission of the company. But if you're offering lackluster benefits or you're not doing anything to help employees feel connected, especially through the pandemic, or if employees just feel like there's no real perks to the job, then you have someone who's engaged, but not satisfied. The holy grail is employees who feel satisfied and engaged. So to figure out even where you stand today, you're going to have to survey everybody. Quick note on surveys, there are pulse surveys that can happen every two weeks, generally on payday, because people are in a better mood, they're more likely to tell you what they think. And then deeper engagement surveys once a quarter that ask maybe up to 20 questions. You can ask a mix of employee satisfaction and employee engagement questions on a pulse survey. So you can mix and match. But to measure for the two different concepts of satisfaction versus engagement, here's the type of questions you would ask. To measure for employee satisfaction, you're going to ask questions like, do you feel connected to your coworkers? 
How open to change are we as an organization? Do you use or do you like the benefits that we offer? Do you have the tools and the software and the equipment that you need to be comfortable and do your job well? Does our company offer adequate opportunities for promotions and career development? Do you feel like you know what's next in your career? Do you feel like the leadership team is transparent? Do you feel like you ever get to have fun in your job? How satisfied are you with the amount of flexibility you have in your schedule? If you were offered the same job at another company, how likely is it that you would stay with us? Overall, you can just ask, how satisfied are you working for our company? Those are the things that are all under your control as the the people leader. You can coach your C-suite to say, hey guys, the whole company just said that they don't feel like you're transparent. What's our action plan to fix this? Or again, go to the C-suite and say, a majority of employees feel like they don't have the tools or technology or the equipment to get their um, job done well. So we need to dig deeper and ask follow-up questions to figure out, do people need more equipment? Do we need more software licenses? We need to empower our people to at least have the, the basics to do their stuff that we hired them to do. That is something you can control. To measure for employee engagement, you're going to ask questions about things that you cannot directly control, but you can definitely influence. So here's a long list of questions. And the way that this list reads, I can imagine there's some kind of slider or like strongly agree, strongly disagree with some options in between. So here we go. Most days, I feel I have a sense of accomplishment from what I do. I'm given enough freedom to decide how to do my work. At work, my opinions feel valued. My manager cares about my opinions. My coworkers welcome opinions different from their own. My manager provides me with the support I need to complete my work. My manager cares about me as a person. My manager communicates honestly and openly with me. The work I do feels meaningful. At work, I feel like I have at least one close friend. If I do great work, I know that I'll be recognized. I get the feedback I need to understand if I'm doing my job well or not. I'm inspired by the purpose and mission of our organization. The demands of my workload feel manageable. So you can see here, this just identifies and reveals manager or team collaboration problems. That's where your employees spend a lot of their time. So if those relationships aren't sorted out or fulfilling for them, because maybe their manager needs some coaching on how to do one-on-ones, I have a whole episode about that. Or just as an organization, you need to coach your managers that peer recognition has a meaningful impact on the business and that managers need to be regularly, publicly recognizing employees who go above and beyond or just do a really great job on a project. Pingboard, who brings you this podcast, we have a peer recognition feature of our product called Applause. And peer recognition has been proven to really improve morale and show people that their work matters and that they're not just like lost in this sea of other employees or even on a small team. It just shows that little things add up to big things, like everything is seen and valued and you're a transparent organization. I will say too that it's so crucial. Anytime you send out a survey, you have to share the results whether it's Slack or an email or in the next all hands, you don't share obviously individual results. This should be in an anonymous survey anyway, but you should say things like, Hey, just so you guys know, first of all, thanks for everyone who participated in that last survey. We heard that 47% of you feel like you don't know what's next in your career path at the company. So the leadership team and I have all gotten together and decided as a next step, we're going to participate in some career pathing. We're going to find everyone's path and figure out how to use each person's skills in a way that will make it clear how you fit into the business long term. And if you got nothing but like rave reviews on a survey, it's okay too. You should say at an all hands or again on some all company thread, say, hey, thanks for everyone who participated in the survey. Like we really do encourage you to be honest in these. We take your feedback very seriously and we're building a world-class employee experience for you. We didn't identify any huge trends. If anyone feels otherwise, please contact me directly, but that thank you for participating. We'll send you out another survey as we always do in another two weeks. You need to build trust and foster this culture where feedback is rewarded. No, you can't always give everyone what they want. You can't always do 401k matching. I know, but you can find creative ways to show everyone that by being honest in these surveys, They're helping you understand where everyone in the organization shakes out, the health of the organization, and also how committed you are to making this a great place to work. And that's the whole goal behind the surveys. So if you're not sharing the results, you're missing the whole point. Your job as the people leader 
as the HR leader is once the employees are done filling out the survey, analyze the results, figure out the main takeaways, what action is needed. And then you go to your C-suite, go to your leadership team, and you deserve a recurring spot, whether it's their leadership team meeting. And maybe that's the part that you join for, because sometimes the HR person is not on the leadership team, depending on the company size, but you deserve the stage. You have to have the stage. In fact, if they're trying to create a great place to work and they hired you, you need time with them after every survey to be like, Hey, this is my takeaway, or these are my several takeaways. Here are my suggestions. Looks like we need to find better work-life balance or people feel like they don't have the tools they need, like I said, but you need to lovingly get in their face and be like, what are we going to do? And push them. If they're like, we'll meet about this quarterly or we'll meet about this, just send us an email. No, this is the foundation of what your company needs to run efficiently. You matter in this process. You're the most crucial piece. So never downplay that. Also listen to your gut. I have a TikTok account. I know that sounds so silly, but I actually use it to make these silly videos about what it's like to work in tech and it's all satire. But it's revealing to me that a lot of employees in the comments, they say things that actually happen to them. They'll say things like, oh my gosh, another pizza party. Great, thanks. I still don't have work-life balance. I don't want pizza. So push back. You have influence and you need to exercise that bone as often as you can with your leaders to say, no, if we go this route, this is what I forecast will happen. People will not be happy. So if you feel like more meaningful action can be taken, push back. You deserve a seat in that conversation and you should actually be leading it. All right. So let's say you've gotten your survey results. You've met with the leadership team. They've got this great plan. They're bought into your suggestion and you're like, sweet. So you tell everyone at the next all hands, people seem excited, but you also have to remember to follow up. If you took on a big undertaking, Hey, we're going to start doing career mapping. We are going to figure out how everyone fits into the organization long-term after the exercise is done. It might take weeks, months, quarters, you should ask everyone, Hey, remember when we did X thing, career mapping, how do you feel like that's going? Or do you feel like that made a meaningful impact? Or what would you have done differently? The follow-up is what really positions you as the people leader in this organization. These employees are going to look at you like, wow, this person's so on top of it, even though I know you guys are so crazy busy in HR and people teams, people ops is just like nuts. <laughs> All of your days are so crazy. And I know you get hijacked all the time, but outward facing, this is how you position yourself as someone who cares deeply about the organization and is just like really good at their job. Follow up with a survey when it's appropriate and then share those results and be like, Hey, another all hands. You guys told us that you wanted career mapping. You guys told us that you didn't feel like you knew your path at the company. So we decided to career path and we did. And here's how it's going. Five times more the employees than did before know what their career path is. If you have any other questions or concerns, come to me directly. But I'm so proud of everyone who gave this feedback. I'm proud of the leadership team for putting in a robust, well-thought-out action plan. And I'm proud of all of you for telling us how you feel like it's going. So here are my final thoughts on why this matters. You're probably all familiar with the war on talent concept. And it basically just means that because of the shortage of skills businesses are facing and employees expectations, not just on benefits, but also their relationships and their experience of feeling like their work matters. It's hard to find people to fill the roles you need to run your business. So to retain your top talent, you need to know and have a handle on, or at least an understanding of how are people feeling? Employee engagement increases the productivity of your workplace. Here's some data from a Gallup study that I will link out to in the show notes. This is staggering. And I kind of almost laugh when I see this because it's so crazy. According to this study, 85% of employees are not engaged. <laughs> that means that only 15% are. <laughs> and that people all around the world are either viewing their company negatively, or they're just doing the bare minimum just to make a paycheck and make it through the day with really no emotional attachment to what they're doing. That also means that at any given time, there's 85% of the world's workforce <laughs> looking for another job, probably on company time, because that's the only time to do it. But here's some more positive stats. When you do figure out engagement and get all that right. This study showed that highly engaged workplaces saw 41% lower absenteeism. 
of course you want your people to go on vacation and have their wedding and go see their sister who just had a baby, take a mental health day. But people who aren't engaged are like, meh, whatever. doesn't matter. I'll take the day off just because I don't really care. That's different. That's not the same thing. Low engagement is a very expensive problem. It costs business on average around roughly like $4,000 to hire new talent and around $1,000 to onboard the new hire. So that means you lose over $5,000 every time an employee walks out the door because maybe they were satisfied, but not engaged. They can go be satisfied anywhere. It's hard to find a company that will keep you engaged. Not to mention just the unquantifiable cost of losing an employee's knowledge (laughs) How frustrating to pass knowledge to a new person when you didn't really have to if you would have just worked to make sure that these people felt engaged. So engaged employees are all around just more efficient and productive, but the majority of the workplace around the world isn't engaged and it has repercussions on your business. Engaged employees are much more likely to provide better customer service. And overall, companies with high engagement are 21% more profitable because they're probably having awesome interactions with your customers. And they're like making your product better every day because they care deeply. It just makes sense. You got to focus on this. It's not an easy thing to fix, but it's totally doable to figure out what needs to be fixed. Does that make sense? I hope so. Engagement doesn't come from snacks and great benefits. Those things are nice. Engagement comes from teams having what they need managers acting like coaches, not like overlords, and people having the relationships and the trust and the room that they need at your company to do their best work. It has to be sort of baked into your culture. So I hope this episode was helpful. I really enjoyed making it. If you have thoughts, you can always email me. I'll include my email in the show notes. You can also follow me on TikTok. My username is at corporate Christie, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E. It's all satire and it's all stuff I use to figure out how to build a better tool for Pingboard. Pingboard is the company that brings you this podcast. We are a really awesome addition to your HR tech stack. And I'm using TikTok to hear from the employee side of things. Like, why don't you like to take your survey? Why do you hate your performance review? And we are working every day to solve for that and what makes it hard for you as the HR or people professional. So check out Pingboard when you have a chance. Thanks for listening. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, everybody. It's Christy. Make sure you go review the show on Apple Podcasts. More reviews means I get to spend more time making the show. Also, I'd love to hear from you. So send me your tips, your questions, or anything else. You can connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash Christy Hoffman. See you next time.